All right, I acknowledge car theft is up 11% in the United States of America. Yeah, car theft is through the fucking roof. Of course, everybody wants to say that's Donald Trump's fault or that's Joe Biden's fault or Republicans. It had nothing to do with politics, smart ass. Just shut up and stop going there all the time like some mindless moron so you can write it off and dismiss it as that and not have to think about it or deal with it. Car theft is through the fucking roof because well, they make them so fucking easy to steal these days. Imagine we all drove paper airplanes, and your woman wants to go see when Harry Log slams Sally. So you fire up the old paper airplane, you drive your woman to the movie theater. Park your paper airplane out there on the curb, and you go in to see when Harry Log slams Sally. There's a thousand people walking up and down the fucking street that night. When you come outside to fly home, there's a real good chance your paper airplane isn't going to be there anymore. Car theft is high because, well, automobiles, especially Kia, are a lot like fucking paper airplanes. When you buy a kick-ass Kia Rio and everything works great except for the motor, it ends up being Rio shitty. Car theft is going to go up. When no work ethic or values have been instilled in these little shit Gen Zers to speak of by their inbred parents... Car theft is going to go up. Either him or me, take what you can get. You don't take it, somebody else will. Well, he shouldn't have done such and such five years ago. I know all the excuses you use for theft, you pile of shit. Yeah, I know all about it. I used to be you. I love it when theft deterrent systems are made out of tissue paper. I really do. You don't have to bypass the theft deterrent system, just rip that fucker out completely. There you go. Where's the screwdriver? Let's go to town in our brand new Kia. Yeah, yeah, Kias are about one step above boxcars. You start with a rubber band. Yeah, where's that front hand crank? We're going to fucking go back to that, have a front hand crank on all the fucking Kias. Plenty of jobs out there, but Gen Zers have been given no work ethic to speak of by their parents whatsoever. Whatsoever. Easier, the short game. That's right, easier. What's the problem with these spoiled bastards? They want everything cheap as they can possibly get it, make as most they possibly can. They want it quick. Instant gratification. These little fucks don't want to have to make a single solitary sacrifice for anything. And they've been taught by their dumbass parents. You don't have to. You can cut corners. You're a half-ass. Tell you what, why don't you ask Stockton Rush how smart it is to cut corners, do everything on the cheap, and do it twice as fast. It's unfortunate that ill shit doesn't have a tongue. <laughs> And the Joke Man Show, a property of Joke Man Productions, LLC. Broadcasting from the Boys Room Studios. Now, time for your host, Stan the Joke Man. the shit you need to know. Israel. President Joe Biden arrived in Tel Aviv today in a show of staunch support for Israel. Him and the Prime Minister, they embraced. Cross swords. Anybody see that? Oh, yeah. The hug happened. The sword crossing took place. They pulled away and President Biden said, is that your sword or are you just happy to see me? Benjamin Netan. Yahoo! Of course, President Biden showed up just a few hours after that blast at the hospital in Gaza. 
Hamas and Jihad are all screaming, we didn't do it, it was Israel. Unfortunately, they don't have any evidence to prove that. Even the bomb blast is wrong. The trajectory evidence, every fucking missile fired, they can see it, they can record it, they can track it. It's all part of military intelligence, folks. And they've got the evidence to show where the rocket come from, from the side of Jihad. Now, they didn't blow up that hospital maliciously. No, a whole bunch of rockets got fired towards Israel, but one of them fell short and landed on the fucking hospital. Damn it, guys, what I don't understand, as a father, as a, I say this to all Palestinian fathers and men out there, guys, why are you sitting still for Hamas? What have they brought you using God's name? What have they brought you? I'll tell you, generations chaos and terror and hardship for you and your family. They use God to keep you subverted. If I were Palestinian and I caught one of them fuckers trying to light one of those around my yard, they'd be a dead motherfucker. After seeing how Israel responds to pop bottle rockets being fired from yards, oh, I'd defend my home. You're fucking A right. Benjamin Netten Yahoo! needs to pull the fuck back. He needs to pull back. There's a lot of innocent people in the middle. Stan, the Joke Man Show was first to give you the news the other day when I said, I guess Hamas is asking, they're saying, hey, we'll let go of the hostages. Stop bombing us. Folks on both sides, this is what happens when you use God. You're fucking A right. You're all guilty of it. Cashing in off God's name, and you're going to fucking pay for that. I'm even talking to the CBN right here in America. Oh, fuck yeah. You're using your power and your influence to write legislation to attack innocent families who need help. Children are guilty of nothing. But you actually deny them help in the name of God. You tell me what you think the difference is between you and Hamas. Hey, retail sales went through the roof for the sixth straight month. Wow, how's that for a transition? <laughs> <laughs> unemployment, mega high. That's unemployment, mega high. Wages outpacing inflation for the first time in a long fucking time. And recession talk has quieted down, despite the election and the turmoil in Washington, because people are starting to know where they're going the sensible way. Not with the fucking maniacs. I love it. Russian President Vladimir Puntang met with Chinese leader Taipin the other day on the sidelines of a summit in Beijing. Putin's, um, Putin's rare overseas trip, it's an effort to underscore the two leaders' shared vision for a new international order. Did you hear that, folks? Are you paying attention? It's really important. Vladimir Puntang just went to fucking China to meet with Taipan so they could discuss their plans for new world order. And your Republican senators like Mark Woman Mullen, Lindsey Graham, and all those other fucking little pussies you endorse, they want to give Ukraine to Russia so then they can have all that Ukrainian wheat, all those ports in the Black Sea, and the Baltic. Yeah, things are going to get cheaper if that happens. And you got all them fucking self-titled hybrid Republican extremists over there trying to sell out and stop the flow of military aid to Ukraine. Thanks a lot, you fucking little pussies. I would expect that from a goddamn wimp. You know, this freedom costs something and you have to fight for it once in a while, pussy. Why don't you just stay in the house with the girls and keep your fucking mouth shut? You're not helping. General Motors, of course. Hey, guys up there in Wayne, Michigan. You guys got that self-driving vehicle up there from GM? Love that vehicle. I can't wait to not drive it because I won't trust it. <laughs> I mean, I'm always going to buy GM. That'll never fucking change. But I better be able to drive it myself because you probably noticed I haven't been in a fatal car accident. You know why? Here I am. Drove myself. I do not trust AI. I don't trust AI. You know why? We created it. Everybody's jerking off to how smart AI is. Are you sure? 
Are you so fucking arrogant? You're ready to willfully just trust your life to a fucking machine. Artificial intelligence is the correct terminology for it because you gave it the answers. was a drunk whore that lived up on a fucking mountain all hopped up on opium and everybody threw their faith in her. What, where are they now? What's the latest from the Spartans on how smart AI is? Ah! Pure, clean cannabis crops. Out there producing and working all night while we sleep. Sun breaks and we see the Griffin family farm. This family, the folks out there, they're out here every day. Working these fields, growing untainted, uncorrupted product. Makes spirits whole again. Hey everybody, it's the Stan the Joke Man. Folks, Fire Meds Cannabis. It's a family farm-to-pipe bud dispensary. I mean, from seed to sale, they're in charge. They oversee the quality control, and you know where your product is coming from. Rick Simpson Oil is made on site. That's right. You don't have to take their addictive dope anymore. Rick Simpson Oil made on site. Do yourself a favor, please. Go to Leafly.com. I want you to look at FireMed's Cannabis entire menu, and you decide for yourself. Know where your product is coming from, my friends. FireMed's Cannabis, Henrietta Stilwell. Welcome back to the Stan the Joke Man Show. There's a couple of quick digs. Looks like Goldman Sachs CEO has stopped doing DJ gigs. That's right. Bank executive David Solomon. He's no longer going to be performing at high-profile events. I don't give a shit. Have you gone to a Goldman Sachs high-profile event? I haven't either. This story is, like, completely stupid. Britney Spears recalls feeling like a child robot under conservative shit, conservatorship in her new memoir. It's called The Woman in Me. Oh, yeah? There's been women in you, too? God. Really? Britney, take it easy. Hey, world's best bar for 2023 has been revealed. The world's 50 best bar awards have been found this winter in a uh, Spanish city. I didn't bother to look that up because I don't have any plans on going to Spain, but I do want to say hello to the listeners in Madrid. Now, that's either listeners in Madrid or those are Russians that are pinging in off fucking Madrid, you know, because they're hacking in to listen to this show. I appreciate that, too, uh, my comrades, Spanish friends. New study, for whatever fucking reason, reveals that our early Europeans thrived on seaweed. Well, who gives a fuck? And who had the time to knock out that kind of a study? That's a dumbass study. Hey, you know, we need to look up and see if early Europeans thrived on seaweed. What the fuck for? Well, we have study money to fucking burn through. We have absolutely nothing to fucking do. Yeah, and this is going to be the most useless study. Um, actually, it's a bet I got going with the guys down at the fucking bar. Which one of us directors can do the most pointless, idiotic fucking study known to man? Hey, what did a guy thousands of years ago eat? Who gives a shit? Did you find a fucking cookbook? Yeah, in the attic or something? Fucking, you got leftovers and they're probably bad. In other strange food news, not really strange, I knew this was coming eventually, I'm surprised it took this long, the Carolina Reaper is no more. The world has a new hot pepper king. It's a brand new one, just came out, and I'm going to let you look up all the Scoville facts and all that shit. Uh, the name of the new pepper is the Chili Pepper X. 
Chili Pepper X has taken the spicy record from the Carolina Reaper. Carolina Reaper used to be it, but now the Guinness Book of World Records has announced this week, Chili Pepper X is your new king in Scoville ratings. Yeah! Oh, shut up, you fucking pussy. <laughs> And so says the guy, I wouldn't even get downwind of one, man. <laughs> of course, I've been saving the big news for last. Jimmy Jordan, of course, uh, didn't fetch the votes he needed today to get that speakership. Thank God almighty. I, um, I cannot help myself but to remind you that Jim Jordan has never put forth one piece of fucking legislation while in office. No, he's just another spoiled rich boy fucking punk that was talked into running so he could do the bidding for his daddy. Oh, sure, you need some evidence? Well, good God, it was Jim Jordan and Donald Trump who both got their fucking campaign fucking payday. Boy, they got their palms greased real good for lifting all the railroad safety regulations and turned Ohio into a fucking toxic waste spill. I'm Stan the Joke Man. I hear that train a-coming With chemicals around the bend Tankers made of tinfoil Every hose I loose in I was standing in my own backyard When I heard that damn train crash Now something smells funny And I have a discolored rash The piece of shit he is He's never put forth one piece of fucking legislation All he's done is obstruct and terrorize innocent people. And, of course, it was nice to watch Oklahoma, Tom Cole, who I thought was an honorable man. Yeah, I know, I was fucking wrong on that one. And fat-ass Stephanie Bice, of course, on their knees, performing fellatio on Jim Jordan. Jim Jordan gets in the fucking office, he's going to interrupt that fucking investigation against the man that attacked our country and killed cops. He's going to stop it all. After all, he's been ducking a subpoena for almost two years on that investigation. You know why? He's guilty. But these fuckers are going to endorse him anyway. In the MAGA world he saw Someone he loved more than his ma Spoiled brats who talk without speaking. Penniless fools that hear without listening. And a loyalty pledge Trumplicans demand if you wanna belong to what? Don't tell them they're wrong. They want sound of bullshit. And the fools they bowed and prayed To that idiot God they made And the good they cried out a warning In the words he speaks propaganda forming Still they sat, quietly watched all his lies tear down the American walls Cause it would have taken balls To muzzle the sound Of bullshit By gosh, this is a very musical show, isn't it? I could do this shit all day, but I won't It's gonna wrap it up with the Stan the Joke Man show Hey, if you like some of these songs Or you dig some of it Would you tell somebody about it? Or maybe, I don't know Tell a friend, hey, check it out. Or share the link with them or fucking something. Help help a brother out. I'd appreciate that, man. I'm just trying to grow this show, and it's growing, just not quick enough. <laughs> Sound like a fucking Cialis commercial. All right. Oh, sorry. Who am I apologizing to? Ah, it's me, it's me, it's me. Anyway. Folks, tonight, chapter 23, you Brit. Bombing Down Poinsettia. It's a shorter audio version of a book I wrote many, many years ago when I was a kid about my existence in Hollywood. I, I ran away as a stupid-ass kid and mm, made a lot of mistakes, made a lot of fucking friends and certainly some crazy-ass memories. And I, It's an audio experience. I put it down like that because if I put it down on paper, publishers want to fucking embellish and they want to goose it up and fuck with it. 
Stories are best when they're true, folks. If you could just believe in yourself and truth. The truth is so much more fucking interesting than bullshit. Even your weaknesses are interesting. And believe you me, my book is filled with... <laughs> All right. Hey, brothers and sisters, that's tonight, 8 p.m., Bombing Down Poinsettia, Chapter 23. Uh, stay on the Joke Man Show. Be back on Friday, high noon. Till then, bye, can deals, me amigos. Trump is the lioness piece of shit I ever knew. Swore that we'd be number one, but the whole damn time it smells like number two. leader you'll ever know Trump swore he'd still be 45 so if you want Ukraine go right ahead and go Ah, Don gives the shittiest numbers Don gives the shittiest numbers Don gives the shittiest numbers that you'll ever know Just no good anymore. Time to go away. No, there's no more time left. Or friends, you say you won't betray. Trump gives the shittiest numbers. Trump gives the shittiest numbers. Trump gives the shittiest numbers. Sounds just like three dog shit.